Alright guys, it's Hannah from Guyana and today we're at the National Museum of World Life on their Woolly Weekend. So far from me, we were like trying not to spread the photographs, show how they were used. But you notice about them, take a closer look and you see they are all slightly different this one because they are made in different districts. The names and ships are close about our skills and knowledge for sharing across the country. They're just they're kind of checking one. That's made from linen, which comes from the flax plant. Oh yes. Okay. And it's a similar process as well to the how you would get the nettle and the hemp fibres. We lay it out on the comb. It's exactly the same principle as with the original. Yeah, it's been in tension. Avocado stones will give you a colour as well. So with natural dyes, normally very high there was a fixing agent. Here is a bunch of old equipment they used to use on the farm.
Then push it all down. We brought a picnic for lunch. You guys can have sausage. Oh, you're gonna have, did you get? And now we're here at the sheep shearing. Every time I take a hole, I'm just coming around slightly. So we're ready for a long road here. And this is the part of the sheep where you're getting the most wool off the stroke. You're really taking off loads of wool. Every time I do that, I'm loads of this wool coming off. Get ready to come around to the last side. Come here. I bring my knees tight, so I have somewhere to put a head while I put my cheek on. And then we'll take it from here and I throw up. I'm going to throw my head up like that. I keep the, I keep the wind tight clear, so there's no pressure on the neck. Coming round, she's still on her bum cheek. My feet are underneath there, so support her. Trying to keep her comfortable. I keep it on. <laughs> she doesn't agree. Then I'll go back and get the bit of mist earlier. With a little blow like that. And then we'll get out the leg on the top stroke here. Left hand is brushing the wool over. So we get all the wool on the top of the leg. And then throwing the skin tight. This left hand is doing most of the work here. And we come round. Left hand again. Making sure I throw the skin tight so we don't catch any of it. And then we'll finish. And even watch how she springs back into life here. <laughs> She must feel so much better can you, though. Can you imagine walking about with that one in a warm summer, summer's day? That is a lot of wool. I think that is the biggest fleece we've taken off yet actually. That is an absolute monster of a fleece. In fact, get a little... How's that one? Big smelly. smelly. <laughs> I, I, I don't look like a sheep. I've got, I've got this bit already eh? This is perfect. Right, here we go. Oh, here we go. It's, it's obviously a bit irritating. This one's going to be here. Will be used for carpets and things like that. Scottish black face wool in particular is very hard wearing. But last year it was due to COVID. 
and the fact that cruise ships, etc., weren't operating. No maggots on this one here. This one's just cheering lovely. And she's a bit of spring back into life. She was giving a wee wriggle there. Just reminding me to make sure I'm keeping her comfortable. Keeping her happy. I'll let you know. Just like that. There we go. You see how much smaller that fleece is? That's just a little tiny fleece. Why did you wear one? I don't know. Kelly. All the pressure at this point is on my right leg. The, the whole weight of the teeth is leaning on my right leg. If I'm trying to keep her over on her right bum seat, away from her tailbone, because if I'm walking onto her tailbone, she'll get quite upset. That's the belly roll. Put that out to the side. Cleaning off the legs. Now, as I bring her round here, sometimes when you're feeling the teeth, she'll bend tight like this. If you just push here, straightens her leg out. So she's on tight, push here, she straightens out for you. It's like a wee, uh, like sweet, sweet physiotherapy, sweet yoga. You just know how to sort of manipulate her and manoeuvre her and to keep her comfortable and to get her to do the things you want her to do. Like I can feel just now, she's not that happy with the position she's in. She's fidgeting a little bit. So I do that as quick as I can and get up the neck. As I step through, I talk about nimble feet. I point my toes out the way and open my leg up so that I can up this neck and under the chin. And then I tighten my foot up. Under her, uh, again under her bum there just to hold her secure. We clear off the seat, my hand slides down and now I've got this ear like a handle. So as I come round here, I can't catch the ear. Worst case, I hit my hand. And that really is worst case. So as I come round here, we still protect the ear and even when I, I take the hand off and come down, it stays behind me and it goes in there. So it's protected by the tip of my arm as I bring her round. Yeah. How do I know how deep? Uh, the, well, how long the road's going to be? Yeah, well, it's just one fetting on these uh, seals. It's not quite like the barber where you could ask for a four all over. I would say she's getting a, a one all over here. Most of them just ask for a one. Uh, if I get special requests, I would consider it, but most sheep just want a one, and they're quite happy with that. If you, tell them, if you tell them it's extra for anything different, that usually changes their mind. They say, oh, can I just give me the one? It's fine. So we're coming under the legs here. You've got to use your left hand to get that skin rolled up so you can get right under there. They're then taking two bows down the way. And then the third bow should go out the leg. Using the left hand to brush this roll forward. You see, I can see her legs sitting tight there. Her legs shouldn't be bent like that. That tells me I've not quite got her in the right position. So I've got to kind of work with my legs to try and get her to sit more comfortable. She's still not right. She's still not comfortable, but this next move to get her into position to where I want her. And she straightens that leg out. Coming round the last few goals. Get ready for her to spring back into life and run away. There we go. There she goes. Just like that. Tremendous. That's another, another big fish. Another big Scotch wheel fish. A lot of weight in that. It's probably three kilos of roll there. That's quite something. Oh! Here are some cute baby lambs. And here's a young calf. <laughs> That's the world that has been sheared. If you want to see more about Kami and sheep shearing, you can go check out his YouTube channel, The Sheep Game. Keeping my toes tucked down, get the pressure off. Last few boys. And that's my hobby.
There we go. And what I'll do, she seems like she'll be very well behaved. I'll just bring her forward a little bit here. Maybe one bit more. And you guys can come forward and have a wee feel how oily she is. And it's him. Feel that? Yeah. Oily shit, that's the lanolin on the skin. That'll give her like a nice waterproof coating when she was back out in the field. Yeah. Keep her skin nice and soft. Did you stroke it then? And now we're touring the old farmhouse. And here's a fake cow with water inside that you can practice milking on. They're bringing in the cattle to milk them now. Excellent 95 cow, 
That means she's graded against the norm for the Yershers and they don't come any later. She's currently produced 14 calves and gives them 4 litres of milk a day. And they don't poke the ground to see them either, so there's something to be said for keeping them going. I will crack on the milking because the young ones had the words for attention span for another night, but you're interested. Um, so get the milking started. Here's maybe a good time to point out that this job didn't come up and used to play music and all that, but still we do that. Three o'clock, uh, that was the big crack at five o'clock in the morning. I've been a stop, I've been a stop in here now for 21 years. Um, I've been a stop in a morning right for the long day before. And the biggest reaction I get is from the younger ones. And why is she really the one person to milk cows in? That's because I'm running away. I had a two job in the training session this afternoon. Because I didn't realise I was on duty. This is very much last minute talk of oh, Maggie not going to do the building on the table. Right. <laughs> I'm delighted to see it before up. <laughs> on the farm, uh, our food farm was short, and we can wonder the, the red tractor then we came. Barbershop scheme. Please do not think if you go to buy milk in a supermarket or beef in a supermarket or pork or chicken that if it's got a salt tire on it, it was made in Scotland. It was made. All the salt tire means is it was processed. So it could be hard to take beef coming in and as long as the carcass comes in and it's processed from a plant in Scotland. Not a salt tire farm, stick it on it. The only thing you can go by is the red tracks of farmer's shoes. And it does exactly what it says in the tin. We inspect it once a year, all the rakes are inspected. Um, they go through everything my housing, my vape makers, my feed makers, you name it. It takes all day to get your certificate. And if there's one number out of line, that's it. <coughs> now when the cows come in, they're tied up. Tied them up for obvious reasons. It's a lot easier to milk a cow if you're not chasing it up and down the byre. <laughs> now this is a dairy byre, it's not a dairy parlour. The biggest difference being that the dairy byre's dual purpose in the 1950s and 60s. Your cattle would have been housed out here, this would have been their winter accommodation as well as being milked. So they'd have been tied up in the net from October through the end up well mid May. So rule of thumb about here, the day the cattle would turn down after their show. And their show is always the same with the main. Uh, nowadays, however, under the current animal welfare code of practice, that's no longer acceptable. I can use this building for milking purposes, but that's the why I can eat big painted straw paint on the back here. That's where they'll go the night. And all my younger visitors will be able to test this three the air when they go home after having a good day out, get the hoover out, get the roof tidied. School day tomorrow. <laughs> right, so it plugs in. The blue line is your vacuum, same in your hoover. The glass and stainless steel line, that's your milk line, that takes the milk directly from the cow through into the dairy. The cluster is the very same as the head in your hoover. Okay, the only difference is the ticking noise you can hear. That's called the pulsator. Inside the metal shell, there's a rubber liner, and that rubber liner's too old. So what happens is it expands. The expands and contracts, changes the procedure, so in effect, you have to help out. So, 
guys thrown out for the units for honour. And that's to check that the milk she's producing is healthy. So there's no sign of clots or anything like that in it because that would be a sign of mistake.